Hey y'all, Chuck here with Hillbilly Half Acre Homestead. And uh, we're getting back out to the rabbitry. Thought we'd give y'all a little update. Remember, remember Velveteen's little babies? Well, guess what? They've been eating. Look at them now. Okay, this film is, was taken on Monday. Or it's being filmed on Monday. Okay, last Friday, they were three weeks old. At three weeks old, we, we rebreed the dough. And in two weeks, these guys are going to get weaned. Yay! They get to go into the grow-out pen. Now, that can be good. That can be bad. Depends on how you look at it. We give people the opportunity to purchase these rabbits in the area. However, if people don't purchase these rabbits for whatever purpose they choose to purchase these rabbits for, um, they eventually, at about 8 to 10 weeks of age, they will go into our freezer for our personal consumption. It seems a shame to do that to such a cute little creature, but, you know, in their own way, all of God's creatures are cute, and God intended for all creatures to be for man's use and consumption. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And we, well, what we call saved them for breeding stock. But these guys, in a couple of weeks, they're going to be weaned. And we'll keep you updated on that. When they're weaned, they'll be ready to go to new homes or they will continue to grow for the freezer. This is Velveteen. She's a big baby. <laughs> She's a big baby. She's a good mama. Her first litter, she had five there, and she raised every single one. Folks, if you're getting, if you're interested in getting into rabbits, I'm going to tell you these drop-down nest boxes. This is the way to go. Last, I don't like wood cages. They harbor disease. The wood, the animals, the animals poop on them. They pee on them, and bacteria grows in the wood. And I just don't like it. This all wire stuff, if you can afford it, uh, is the way to go. I can't really afford it, but. We buy, we, we'll buy a roll here, we'll buy a roll there. Pretty soon, you know, you've got a pretty good setup. We've got a, this is two three section cages hung. They're hung from the ceiling and from the wall. And these drop down nest boxes here, we use half inch by one inch, or one inch by half inch, however you choose to say it, uh, wire for that. Now ordinarily you would see, <laughs> you have a troll? Now, ordinarily, you would see that around the bottom of the cages here. People use what they call baby saver wire. Well, you know, if you have a doe and she's inexperienced or just ornery and she chooses, or she sneaks up on you and has her babies a little early and you don't have a nest box ready, she's going to have them on that wire. Nine times out of ten, your bunnies are going to get cold, chilled, and they're going to die. Okay? Well, <laughs> he made it that time. The thing is, the baby saver wire doesn't help with that, okay? These nest boxes, these are drop down. The bunnies, they can't get out of this, okay? They cannot get through this wire. They can't fall out on the ground. We, we take the nest material out when they get three weeks of age because they don't really need it anymore. They can hop in and out, and if you leave that nest material in there, they're going to start using it as a bathroom. And that's just, you know, that's not a good situation. So what we do is we take that stuff out of there. But these drop-down boxes, um, last year we lost numerous. We were using this same wire, but I made cages out of it that sit on the floor inside the cage. The does, they didn't like them. They didn't, uh, they would grab a hold of them, move them around turn them upside down, dump their kids and the bedding and everything else out on the wire at the bottom of the cage. Uh, last summer, out of I don't know how many litters, I don't think we, we saved maybe just a very few young rabbits, okay? It was just uh, money down the drain, okay? And I happened across this idea, and I tried this. Velveteen's first litter, like I said, she had five. 
she raised every single one okay now <coughs> this is Jessica or Jesse as we lovingly have adorned her this is not her first litter she had a litter last year she was one that lost her litter last last summer because of the nest box situation okay it just didn't work now she's got a nice new drop down nest box hey look what she's got you haven't seen these guys yet okay since we last brought you out to the rabbitry we've had some new additions okay i'll show you one this is a little dark one look can you see <laughs> looks like a little mouse now <laughs> Give them, give them about three weeks and they'll look just like those guys over there. There's a little, I think there's a little, there's a light colored one in here. I'll show you one of those and then we'll get out of here and leave them alone. It is, it's in the mid 60s, but that's just a little bit chilly for these guys. Okay, that's Mary's baby right there. Okay, this baby right here, Mary next door, next door here, it was her first litter. She only had one. Now, bless her heart, if you've ever looked up things even even the same with uh it's the same way with dogs and cats okay if if an animal only has one baby a lot of times their one baby is not enough you know nursing on them to keep their milk production system going uh, the babies sucking on their mother's teeth is what stimulates the mother to produce milk and continue to produce milk okay one baby not enough so Jessica she had six and she can raise 12 but she had six so she's gonna take care of Mary's baby for her and as you can see we've cleaned out Mary's nest box bless her heart you know I mean she she didn't do anything wrong. She just had the one baby. I mean, it's her first litter. Uh, your first time around. A little stinker. Their first time around. Uh, sometimes they do have small litters. Uh, Nala's first litter, she only had three. Unfortunately, due to our error, she lost all three of those. Nothing she did, but she only had three. This time, and I'll take you on down here. Hey, this is Big Red, by the way. This is the daddy of all of them. Whoops. <laughs> he don't like his nose being touched too much. Okay, I'm gonna have to get these guys some water. Okay, this is Nala. And Nala has thrown her water dish down there. I guess she's trying to say, hey, give me a drink. We'll get you something to drink there. She's a little skittish. She's a little skittish. Okay. Now, Nala, like I was telling you, Nala had her babies. Her first litter was three, she lost every one. Guess how many are in here now? Here's one. And I think there's gonna be some interesting markings. See the light color inside their ears? I've not seen that before, but look. See mama? That's either light colored short hair inside the ear there, or it's just no hair at all. Uh, See underneath? See the light belly? Well, mama's not that way. But look at daddy. See his belly? Here, back up. I got it. Back up, Red. See how he's got the light hair underneath? He passed that along to these youngsters. And it looks like they're all going to have a nice, nice, pretty light coat underneath. I see Nala's getting a little little bit nervous. She's kind of new, and she's skittish anyway. If I didn't answer the question, Nala's got eight babies. <laughs> Is that correct? Yeah. Eight babies. They all look, to my best I can remember, I haven't been in here in a few days. These were all born last week. Uh, we'd like to let them, they, well, they're born, they're born completely naked. No hair on them whatsoever. Uh, now they've got a little hair. It's short, but... We didn't want to. We didn't want to get in here and disturb these guys and show them to you until they had a little bit of hair on them. Uh, it, it's a little easier for them to regulate their body temperature. But I want you. 
I'll scoot over here if you can. I want you to just take a pic picture of this nest. Look at this. I hope you can see that. Okay, see all that fur that she pulled and put in there? She's a good mama. It's not even that cold, okay? We're getting in the 50s at night, but for rabbits, I mean, that's kind of chilly, but um, see all this hair? Nice, fluffy, and there's straw underneath, okay? They're nice and warm, snug as a bug in a rug. This drop-down nest box, okay? Usually, if you're gonna lose a young rabbit, you lose it within the first two to three days, okay? These rabbits are past that threshold. Uh, unless something drastic happens, we have a predator invade. Good thing is a snake cannot even get into this. These holes are too small. Any snake that would pose a threat to these young rabbits can't get through there. Now they would have, they could come up here, unfortunately, and come through and go down, I guess. But uh, let's hope that doesn't happen. Okay, let's just uh, let's just be optimistic there. But uh, okay, we just wanted to show you guys. But these drop down nest boxes are the way to go. Uh, eight by eight in opening in the floor of the cage. Uh, I made these. I made these nest boxes and we'll show you this empty one here. It's easier for you to see. These are 14 inches long, 10 inches wide, eight inches deep. Okay? A lot of you are gonna say that's too small. Well, no, that's not too small. We're doing it, okay? It's plenty. The doe only gets in there at night when she feeds her baby. She, she'll do it usually at night. You'll, you, you very rarely, if ever, and I have never come out here and seen doe rabbits sitting down in the nest box during the daytime. They'll get in there and they'll feed their rabbits at night and then they'll get away from the nest. Now the reason for that is, think about it, in the wild, if a mama rabbit stays at the nest, She's going to draw a predator's attention, and a predator's going to look for an easy meal. Okay? So, she goes in the dead of night, she feeds her bunnies, she gets away from the nest. Now, she's usually where she can see the nest, you know, in the wild, out in the circles around. Usually, she, she can see the nest, know if everything, and know if everything's okay, but if she stays too close to that nest, she's going to draw a predator's attention. And they're going to say, hmm, there's a reason she's staying right there where she is. And they're going to go check it out. And they're going to get, they're going to tear up the nest and they're going to destroy the young babies. So even though these are domesticated rabbits, that's, that's, that's kind of a, an instinct or a trait that they still have retained over, over the, the years, you know, of domestication and what have you. But, uh, so you don't really have to take in, I mean, she has to have room to get down there. But what she's going to do is, when she climbs in here, when Jesse climbs in here, her babies notice they're over here. She's going to sit. She's going to. She's going to go head first, and she's going to go this way. She's going to sit right in here, where there's no babies, and she's going to hover over these babies, and they're going to and, and bring them up to her to where they can nurse. Okay, and then she's going to pull back, and she'll raise up and jump up out of that box. Okay, now look. There's Velby. Look, tell me she can't fit in that box. They're all the same size, folks. Then the rabbits are all the same size. The only difference is is Velvie's been nursing young ones and she's just she's down just a tad in weight. But that alfalfa hay is pretty rich. They usually don't lose very but just maybe very little if any weight while they're nursing their young. But my point is these are plenty good enough and if you use this half inch by one inch wire, the babies can't get out. They can't if they were up in there and they got out of the nest box, they can fit through these little one inch holes and get over here. That doe, she might be in a bad mood. Uh -huh. Sometimes a doe will tolerate another one's babies coming over into its territory. Other times a doe might kill it. The buck definitely will kill it if they get in there with him. So, they can't not get out of this. They are confined to this area until they get that size and can jump up out of the box. And once they start jumping up out of the box, we take all this nesting material out of here because all they're gonna do is continue to use that as a bathroom and it's just gonna pile up, it's gonna stink, and it's gonna harbor disease. And this is the, you know, it's just the best way. This way you take everything out of here, they, they go down in here, they do their bathroom thing, it's all gonna fall through onto the ground, okay? 
And uh, what we're doing here, you can see we've got a big pile of straw and hay and everything mess under these cages. Uh, periodically, we fork this out, we compost this down, we put it in a garden. Um, this is good for if you like uh, vermicomposting or, you know, worm, you know, making your own, uh, composting with worms, basically making your own worm castings. Uh, this is good stuff. Uh, this is good stuff. And uh, the rabbit manure, unlike chicken and duck manure and things like that, rabbit manure, it won't burn your garden plants. You can literally take rabbit manure and as long as you wash the urine off of it, you can take and put those pellets in a pot. You can actually plant a seed in there and grow them. Okay? It's not hot. It's not going to burn up your plants the way chicken manure and other types of manure will. That's the good thing about rabbits. Uh, rabbits and gardening go very, very good together. But anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, I, uh, I love talking to you guys. I love talking about rabbits. We've got other critters in here we're going to show you. And uh, we're going to cut this video off, I guess, and we're going to go try something else. Catch you later.